Hi, I'm Professor Joaquin Hafner. My little brother Jason made a video called Why Physics is Hard, and it's been getting a lot of views lately and a lot of discussion, and it was really targeted for his intro mechanics course. So it was really just meant for people who are just starting to learn physics and having a lot of trouble. So on YouTube, it's kind of out of context. So I thought I would make a follow-up video on more reasons why physics is hard if you continue down this path for a career in physics. Perhaps this will be useful. So we started out with the very first semester of why physics is hard, and you're starting to deal with lots of algebra and calculus, etc. Let's say you really enjoy intro mechanics and you decide to take intro ENM, the second semester of intro physics. So then uh, one big reason people maybe have trouble is really this should be called intro to field theory, because you're dealing with abstract fields. So all of your intuition you had that you're able to use in mechanics, you don't have any intuition for electricity and magnetism. So that's rough. Also, maybe you got really good at algebra and you mastered all the one-dimensional calculus and you were feeling good about yourself. Here we need vector calculus. So again, more difficulties. Well, let's say you finish off intro e &M, it went well, and now you're thinking you want to be a physics major, then you're going to take more classes and deal with quantum mechanics. Now, maybe this is the reason you want to be a physics major, all the exciting strangeness about quantum mechanics. Um, one difficulty you have is here you had an intuition, here you don't have any intuition, and now suddenly this is against your intuition. So you have to ignore your intuition and develop a new one when you start to learn quantum mechanics. And as you continue on past these throughout the undergraduate courses, new math methods are going to keep coming up. And it's not just enough to know calculus, you realize, oh, the way physics actually works is we take the laws of physics and use them to write differential equations. We have to solve differential equations. That's a whole area. All this integrating we're doing is really just solving differential equations. And then partial differential equations and Fourier series and complex analysis, more and more and more and more. So all this happens throughout undergraduate, but maybe you start to see that it's really just sort of a bag of tricks that you're developing and maybe you'll start to see that we're kind of using the same tricks over and over again in different areas of physics. Eventually, though, if you continue through undergrad and you major in physics and you're starting to have to think about life, right? The next question is grad school. So what do you want to do? How much physics do you want in your life? Do you want it to be a hobby or a career? So um, if you stop at undergraduate, there are plenty of jobs you can get, uh, technical jobs. Physics majors are often seen as kind of able to do anything because they learn programming and math and uh, problem solving. But if you want to move forward sort of in research, uh, you probably uh, do need to go to grad school in most cases, not all cases. So you decide to go to grad school and it'll be more of the same, more classes, more math methods, learning more physics. But then you'll start to run into difficulties why physics is hard unrelated to to math, and you'll have to figure out how to pick a research area. All right, so now you gotta start reading the literature and learning what research areas are exciting to you and what research areas have a growing future. Because realistically, you wanna be in an area that other people are excited about. So suddenly you have to think about other people to have a career in physics and to do physics. Wow, that's hard. And then you gotta think about networking, what? Yes, you have to talk to others uh, in physics if you want to keep going. Because at the end of grad school, now you got to decide again, what do I want to do with my life? Right? There's many paths you can go. You can go to industry, national labs, academia. And the one thing I would recommend to sort of make this decision is ask yourself, clearly you want to do physics for a career or research since you went to grad school. Ask yourself, do I want to be the boss and decide the research direction and no one can tell me what to do? Or do I want to work in physics and it's okay if somebody else decides that? I want to be there doing the work and figuring it out. So where are you in that range, right? If you love doing the physics, you don't necessarily have to make every decision and drive the ship. Then industry, national labs are a good choice. Technician, lots of options. If you really have to be in charge uh, and you can't stand the thought of anyone telling you what to do, Probably academia is the way to go. You get a postdoc and, and see how it goes from there. Um, yeah, that's as far as I can think. Let's see, then you're, uh, I guess it'd be my age, right? 
I wish I was still my little brother Jason's age. You have to be my age, then you start to ask me, what was it all for? What, why did I dedicate my life? Anyway, that's a future problem in physics. Hopefully, you don't have to worry about it for a long time.